Hey guys, Lock here from Go Bitless. Today I wanted to chat to you about this Hackamore to help you guys be able to know uh, what to look for as far as the good and the bad when you're looking for a, um, a raw hide Hackamore. Now this one, at first you look at it and you see lots of you know pretty braiding and it is quite neat on both ends. And yeah, so if you didn't look too much closer, you give it a bit of a feel, a bit of a wobble. Yeah, cool, that's a good Hackamore. But looking a bit closer, there's a lot of things I don't like about it. And um, I touched on it in another video. Um, but yeah, a friend of mine gave this to me to look at because her dog chewed on the end. Um, but yeah, you can see here on this nose button, it's just wrapped God knows how many times with, um, with masking tape, which is just a really cheap and nasty way to do it. It's normally done with leather, so not very impressed with that. The... Um, the rawhide string itself is incredibly thin. So when it's too thin, um, firstly, you can't bevel it properly. And secondly, it can wear out to the point where it can actually wear through. And another thing I noticed, when you look at these body strings, this is a 16 braid hackamore and every string should be exactly the same. The same width, the same depth, the bevel, um, that's the quality you're going to get from a good hackamore maker. This one, some of these strings are actually half the size of other ones. So, um, really cheap and nasty again, the way that's done. Um, any good maker would chuck it in the bin and start again. Um, not that they'd probably do it in the first place, but yeah, just not quality at all. And, uh, another thing I noticed again, which is a big no, no looking at this braiding, basically once you set up your braid, you're just taking a string at a time going over two, under two, over two, under two. And there's actually a part on this hackamore uh, down the bottom here where they've actually gone over three. And once you do that, that screws up all the rest of the braiding. So um, another just big no-no from me. So this hackamore, I've got to say, it's pretty disappointing because like I said, it came from a, uh, a good name supplier. And I've got to say, it's just, it's quite cheap and nasty, but it, you could see from maybe just having a, a look on the internet and buying it from a photo, you think you're doing the right thing. But these are some of the things to look out for because like this one, there's some pretty ordinary gear out there. And if you're paying top dollar for a Hackamore, um, you want to make sure you're getting good stuff. So I always recommend to go direct through Hackamore makers who have been doing it for quite a while and they can show you their quality of work and you at least know you're getting value for your money. So, so guys, I hope that helps. Uh, please stay tuned. I'm gonna keep sharing more information on everything you guys need to know about natural hackamores. So we'll see you again soon.